So today, um, I am going to show you how I clean my reels once a year. Uh, winter's coming, and I would love to use that rubber set, but I'm not going to do it. Um, and this is where I like to go ahead and kind of do a deep clean of my rods. So today's video is going to show you how to only clean the upper portion of your rod, which is the pin reel, which let me show you. It's this guy right here. So this is actually the Fierce 2 from Pin. Um, you'll find in all my videos, these are all I'm going to show. I love the pin reels more than anything else. I've had a lot of other reels. If you're a big fan of Zipco's or any of the Walmart reels, completely get it. But I have had these reels for over five years, done um, minimal cleaning on them. Uh, generally, I only rinse them off every time I use them. This reel in particular has been used probably just this year over 35 times. So all I do is when I'm done, I give them a nice hose down to get that salt water off of it. And then what I'm about to show you in this re um, video is, is what I do during the winter time to just do a deep clean. So the only thing is I'm only going to today going to show you how to clean the upper part of the reel, which is this area and the handle. Um, there is, I'm debating on whether they're doing it or not, because I'm afraid people are going to start taking their reels apart and not be able to get the gears back together. In this housing right here, it can get kind of complicated, especially if you have a, um, a worn pattern on there. Sometimes it is very difficult if you're not used to it to put all these gears back in place. So today's portion of the video, we're only going to talk about how to clean the, uh, dismantle the, the handle itself and then the upper portion. So uh, I hope you find this helpful. Like I said again, um, I only do this once a year when it gets a little colder because I like to hang out in the shed a little bit and do this, but I've done this once a year for all seven of my pins that I currently have and haven't had any issues with them. So the biggest thing you're really going to want to look at, and you'll see in this video I talk about it several times, is you want to get all the dirt and grime out of the upper unit so it doesn't travel down to the gear housing and create extra friction that eventually is going to really hurt the longevity of the overall reel itself. The more friction you have on those gears, the more wear you have, and the longer they're not going to last. So I hope you find this useful. This is just what I do every year. Um, it really has worked out great for me. Um, let me know what you think in the comments below. And uh, if you have any advice you want to give on how I could improve this video, let me know. All right, thanks, guys. So today I will be taking apart and cleaning the Pin Fierce 2, which I've used for about five years. Uh, first thing you're going to do is you're going to start to go ahead and take off the end cap. So what this is going to do is this is going to take your end cap off and allow you to remove the hole from the rod and clean the surface shaft that you will see underneath here in a second. What you're really wanting to do here is that you're wanting to get all that grit and grime that I talked about earlier in the video off of the reel because what that does is once that grit and grime gets down into the actual reel itself um, it causes extra wear and tear down in your gear joints and really reduces the amount of life that you're going to have in the overall reel. So as you see, pull that off. I don't know how clear that's coming out right now but as you can see there's a little grit and grime in there. As I've said before, really the only thing I've done so far this year is just light dusting of fresh water over the reel to get off the salt water. So as you can see, not that bad. So then that pops off. There's your reel right there. As you can see, there's a little bit of gunk in there that we will wipe off with some of our Q-tips. Uh, just again, making sure that we get all that dirt and grime out of there for next year, that it doesn't go down into this bottom part of the shaft here into your gear base. If that gets on your gear joints, that could cause some serious issues later. So, with that being said, next step, we're going to set that to the side, grab our Q-tip, and all we're going to do is just do a nice, light cleaning around the inside, and then around the outside as so. So as you can see right there, this is what it looked like before I stuck it in, and this is what it looks like now. That is what you were wanting to prevent to get down into your gear base, which is right in here. 
So once we have that all cleaned out, which you can see doesn't take a whole lot of effort, um, we're just going to make sure it's nice and clean, and then we are going to actually add a little bit of um, um, spin oil to the mechanism. And there is a little spring in there. You just want to make sure you get all that grease off. And again, that was clean earlier, as you can see. And now just look how dirty it is. So like I said, this is really your deep clean that you're going to form once a year. And uh, it's really going to help with the longevity of the overall lifespan of the reel itself. So then we're going to flip it over and we're going to wipe down this top part as well. And all you're doing is you're just really getting in there getting all that grime off like so. So again, and so I did this last year too. And you can just tell over a one year time frame, this is how long it just... Uh, it takes for stuff just to get piled up in here and the corrosion over this amount of time Also, we're gonna wipe off of this top rim here Make sure we're getting all that dirt off again. Look how nasty that is And then one last thing I like to go ahead and wipe off is that end cap that we took off earlier So you're gonna take this you're gonna need a lot of q-tips for this get down in this area Go all the way around the wheelbase just a couple times like so in the cap itself around the outer side of the plastic area that's what it looks like before and that's what it looks like now All right, and then so now we're also going to start on the top wheel shaft of the base of the rod itself so now we want to do the same thing work on the inside go all the way around at least once Get off all that grime, get on the shaft itself, work around the bolt, up on the gear. That gear does come off. Honestly, I haven't found any real need to take that gear off. I like to just get down close around it, and you can see I'm pretty much getting everything off. Uh, also, when we put some of our real cleaning solution on there, it will rinse down into that gear housing just a little bit, not messing up anything too bad. So that's pretty much it for your top part and now we're just going to do some oiling of the gear itself. Alright so now that we've pretty much cleaned off all the heavy debris from the shaft itself I'm going to go ahead and get at some of our cleaning solution that comes in that kit that I talked about earlier. Uh, what I like to do is, is just put a little bit directly on your q-tip and then I'm just going to mix it around because what you don't want to happen is, is to this solution to run down into your gear housing which is down here that I talked about earlier. Um, so all I do is just kind of brush it on nice and lightly, not too heavily, because again, you don't want that to run down into your gear housing because that's where all your lubrication is with your other grease, and that can cause some issues down the road. So just a nice light rub all over the shaft, on the lower part of this shaft down here, and then I just like to kind of get off a little bit of that other grease in here. So as you can see, it's really getting nice and clean now. Pretty much got all the grime up and that top shaft is now pretty lubricated. I don't know if you can tell before, but that actual white o-ring was not white when we started cleaning. So give us another little shot of oil here. And just make sure it's evenly spread on throughout. Awesome. Doesn't that look a lot better? All right, now that we have the top portion done, we're going to go over to the spindle housing. Again, do the same thing that we pretty much just did to the shaft of the upper housing. Uh, I'm going to give it a little shot of cleaning solution in here, which is really just an oil. Um, give a nice round of top, and then throughout the bottom down here sure you can see all that and I will show you here's the before and after picture of what that looked like cool now we'll flip it over go through the center same thing just make sure that oil is all around the outer shaft all right so the next portion I like to clean is the um, bail release so generally what I do here, I don't take this fully apart. I just put a little bit of my cleaning solution in the cracks itself and just kind of work that back and forth. 
Um, really, I have taken it apart in the past and I find it more of a pain to put back together. And honestly, there's not a whole lot of dirt in there. And I'm not too worried about any of the dirt in there going in again to the gear housing that we talked about earlier. So that's pretty much it for that portion. Uh, just give it a few clicks and as you use it, it works it down into that housing itself. And then I like to actually wipe off some of the extra bit that you see here. So. All right, cool. So now that we're done with that, a lot of people, which I didn't know until I took this apart for my first time, there is a bearing in this joint right here. So all you're gonna need for this is a Phillips head screwdriver. Which I have right here and we're gonna take this apart and so there I believe if I remember correctly there are three pieces to it you have a washer the bearing itself and then another washer on the back side so you take this off like this As you can see there, there is your bearing. So that has actually built up quite a bit of corrosion on it. You can see that it's green. So if we put some of our cleaning solution directly on it, let it soak for a second, and then we just give it a slight rub, you will see how nicely that cleans up. Now that we've got that all cleaned up, I'm going to set that aside. Make sure you don't lose your washer. Um, I'm actually going to put a, bit, a little bit more of the cleaning solution on this section right here. And we'll just give this a nice little wipe down. So all cleaned up. Uh, what we'll do is we will place this back in. I did put a little of the cleaning solution around there so it gets some of that dirt and grime out. Simply just place it back over it. Make sure your washer goes in. Then use your Phillips screwdriver to screw it the rest of the way back on. Pretty easy, nothing really to it. Just make sure you have a nice snug fit. Because that part, even on though it's not on a bearing, is on a plastic slide, it does actually spin if you can see. So your uh, line doesn't get too much friction on there. There we go. So now we pretty much have the upper unit completely cleaned. As you can see, it looks a lot better than it did before. All right, so now to clean the lower unit, you're gonna to wanna to take your handle off. So what I generally do is just grab the upper unit, give it a nice hard tug forward, and it just screws all the way off. So give this a few. There we go. So now that that's off, you can see there's a little bit of dirt and grime around there. Of course, what we're going to do for this section is just go ahead and start getting off any of the heavy excess stuff that you can before we put our oil on, just to make sure we don't smear some of that down into the gear joint itself. As you can see, pretty nasty. Uh, pretty common area that this builds up when you are using the rod. So there we go. Alright, so I've got that wiped out. All right, so talk, as we talked about earlier, I'm not actually going to go into the lower housing of this. Uh, complete honesty, this screw right here, I just tried to untake it. It is completely salt water, grows shut, and I can't get it off. Um, so I'll do another video just on the lower half of this, how to take these gears apart and put them all back together. Not going to do it in this video. Um, do apologize for that. But now, really, for the purposes of this, we do have the upper unit pretty much cleaned and ready to go. So let's put it back together. All right, <clears throat> so now that we have the upper unit cleaned and the bearings cleaned, we're going to go ahead and put our um, rod handle back in. It is pretty simple. You just place in and give it a few cranks, hold your top of your rig, and you should be just fine. Go ahead and hold it and give it one tight grip. And then once you have it in, it should be good to go. Now that we have our rod holder back in place, we're going to go ahead and put our end cap on, which is just as simple as you took off. Just to let you know, I went ahead and wiped down everything with a little bit of the cleaner. Yeah, you can see there's a little bit better of a shine on it now. 
So place that back on and go ahead and put your last screw in. Alright, so now that we have that complete, we're going to go ahead and put our spool cap right back on. Usually it clicks right in. Sometimes I go ahead and give it just a quick turn to make sure it's connected, which it goes on very simply. And you'll see it's flush here at the top. So now it's spinning. Not a problem. So then go ahead. We already cleaned off our cap. Go ahead and put that back on and just go ahead and tighten it down. You will want to adjust your drag when you're out fishing though. Um, I go ahead and just make sure I get it where I can just pull enough off to go ahead and re-rig the entire rig. <clears throat> Alright. And as you can see, we are complete. Everything is reassembled. And we are good to go for next year.